Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now talking about a woman who has made history in Africa. Her name is Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. She's Nigeria's former minister, and she's now emerged as the Director General of the World Trade Organization, beating seven other candidates to clinch the title. Uh, her term will begin on 1st of March, 2021. We've now invited Professor Pat Utomi to discuss this with us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure. All right. We've seen, you know, about two African men, you know, rise to the top jobs of, you know, the, uh, we're talking about the United Nations and the World Health Organization. This time around, it's, it's a woman and an African. How would you interpret this in light of, you know, more opportunities for Africans and for women on the global stage? Well, it's, it's a natural evolution process. Uh, central to all of this is the role of education in preparing people for roles. Uh, Dr. Ngozi Kunjewala, as you know, is a very well-educated woman. Her track record uh, is one that essentially makes her fit for purpose for that kind of assignment. Uh, and I think that what we must do for our next generation, male, female, but for purposes of inclusion, really seriously emphasize uh, females because they've not had as much opportunity to get the kind of education, the kind of exposure that will make them uh, fit and proper candidates for top uh, merit-driven positions in the world. All right. Um, President Mohamed Abari says, uh uh, he believes that she will excel in her new position as DG of the World Trade Organization. Uh, so, um, Professor Otomi, help us understand uh, what her responsibilities are, um, what exactly the World Trade Org uh, Organization does, and what role she's expected to play at a time like this. It, it, it may not be one of the most popular organizations. People would um, always refer to you know, others first. Um, so what exactly does the WTO do and what, you know, are the expectations from Okonje Wela uh, to make a, um, you know, a, a strong stand in that position? Well, first of all, I think that the more people understand prosperity, the more they will understand the role of the World Trade Organization. Throughout human history, true sustained prosperity has come from trade. What is trade? Trade is the organization of activities such that when you produce what you are best able to and exchange it with somebody who produces, produces what they are better able to, you get efficiencies and the scale economies and all the things that come from being the one who does it well and does it plenty, makes the costs more affordable as you exchange with the person who you buy from the things that they better produced. So through our history, it is trade that has driven growth and human development. Unfortunately, the nature of trade is such that when you begin to prosper as a result of trade, you begin to get anxious that people may literally steal your prosperity. So you begin to protect yourself from what they could do that will affect your prosperity. Now, economists generally refer to that as beggar thy neighbor policies. That is, uh, policies that protect you with tariffs, tariff barriers and the like. While we get, we'll try to reconnect with him, one of the questions I would like to ask him, Kinley, is about the stance of President Donald Trump, you know, regarding Ngozi Okonjewela. You know, we discussed with uh, Professor Otomi earlier about, you know, the Trump-Biden yeah. candidacy, and we saw exactly what he felt, you know, about Trump. Now, it seems that, you know, the consensus that we had from Trump was basically that he was just so opposed or just so committed to undermining African leadership. And we saw how he was just so in support of, you know, the South Korean uh, candidate. But now the Security Council at the WTO have, you know, appointed, it was a consensus, they appointed uh, Ngozi Okunjaiwena now. So I would like to get a sense of what 
Professor Otomi thinks about this, you know, with Trump's stance and how Biden basically differs from, from Trump's, you know, to uh, Okonje Wheeler's new you know, position as the head of the WTO. Do we have yeah. Professor Otomi now? Now you, you, and you also cannot um, ignore, you know, the role that politics really plays, world politics plays in, um, you know, these things. If you remember also, Akimumi Adishin also had his own struggles when True. he was seeking re-election. Um, there's always going to be personal interest, there's always going to be interest from certain countries um, to, you know, fit in what they, of course, or, or, or what rather to, you know, put themselves in the right position all the time. And so... Um, you know, there, there would be different ways to analyze Donald Trump's feelings and, you know, the reason he may not have supported uh, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala. It also might be because of their relationship, the narcissistic relationship with South Korea and because of the other, other candidate. But what is most important is that she has been able to stand out and not just in Nigeria, but across the world as one of the most phenomenal people. And so... Um, that that you can never take away from Ngozi Okonjo Iweala. Sure. Um, regardless of what position she's vying for, she would always be able to stand out. She has a, a CV that is outstanding in every way. And so that for me is what I would focus on. Donald Trump, you know, is gone. He would, he would always be Donald Trump. Politics would always, there would always be politics across the world to make certain decisions. Um, and um, these things would, would never be taken away. But congratulations to her. Yes, um, big one. I'm, I'm also very concerned about the responsibilities that she has from the 1st of March 2020, or 2021, sorry. Yes. Um, the role that she needs to play, in what ways can she improve the WTO, in what way can she make it a, you know, an organization that actually that stands stronger across the world, uh, in what ways can she also be more influential, make the WTO more influential across the world with regards to trade um, in different continents, with different countries. Um, um, I feel like in the past there's been a lot of uh, trade decisions that have been made based on politics and based on personal interest um, between countries and based on um, the one country trying to be the other country's you know, superpower in the world and all of that. Those decisions have been made for a long time. And so at what point does WTO step in? And, and also, what role does the WTO have to play with regards to trade here in Africa? Yes. There's a lot that Africa has to offer. There's a lot that Africa is still offering to the rest of the world. There's a lot that Nigeria still has to offer to the rest of the world. In what ways can we have a stronger footing with regards to trade with, um, with Europe and with Asia and, and with uh, you know, South America and some of all those places? In what ways can she also influence trade here in Africa? Because I feel like there's, there's also a lot of ways that we, we lack um, and I be, might be, well, I don't think I'm wrong. Um, like, you know, better coordination here in Africa, we've been able to, you know, have better trade with, with ourselves. The AF, uh, C, AFCTA um, agreement um, um, also, you know, would play its own role. But WTO is very, very vital. And I think that she should definitely um, play a role. Right. Uh, Professor Otomi, welcome back. Um, apologies, I think we lost you via video. So we have you via phone now. Good morning once yeah. again. Good morning again, Sorry about uh, the system, uh, but I, I was saying that um, what has happened is that uh, capable people from the education that they get, actually, a bit of irony here. Uh, many years ago, I was on a conversation with the British, uh, the British High Commissioner in Nigeria, and two or three of us, and Ngozi Okonjo Iweala in the U.S. And we're talking about the idea of a demographic dividend. A demographic dividend is what comes when you invest in your young people so that population stops becoming a negative in terms of economic development and becomes a huge positive which is what happened to China and significantly is happening to India. Yes. So Dr. Konjo Iwala is a classic example of investing properly in the, in, in the life of a young lady who then becomes significant human capital. And that is what she, she has fallied into this global uh, recognition and acceptance. Professor, Professor Otomi, before, before um, we lost you there, I, I, I want as quickly as possible your thoughts on 
the role that the WTO um, plays with regards plays. to trade across the world That's and right, yes. in what ways Ngozi Okonjo well as Emergence can improve on that trade with regards trade in Africa, trade in Asia and in Europe and in the, in the Americas and across the whole world. In what ways can we improve on the connectivity that exists? Well, trade is usually affected by a variety of things, which include imbalances created by capacity to process. Uh, Africa contributes no, no more than 3% of global trade because most of what Africa sells to the world is not processed, raw material that gets taken abroad, gets processed, values added, and sold back to Africa and sold elsewhere. Africa does need a rule-based system that has support capabilities that can enhance processing, for example, in Africa, so that Africa gets more out of its participation in global trade. Uh, incidentally, and, and this is a really important uh, part of this conversation, I happen to be chairman of PathTrack. PathTrack is the African Union's private sector uh, trade and investment committee. And uh, last year, PathTrack held a continent-wide uh, webinar on the kind of person we would like to see as the leader of the WTO. And among the EU's that we raised in that webinar is the need to create possibilities for clusters across borders for uh, aggregation, aggregation and processing, so that Africa can properly engage in world trade. As we are presently located in global affairs, we cannot even pull together the kind of volumes that will enable us engage a huge global corporation, say like Walmart. If Walmart wants jeans, it's looking at you're supplying them maybe 300,000 pieces of blue jeans every Monday morning. Now, the way that African economies are, that would be probably impossible. One or two manufacturers who produce 10,000 pieces. And so Walmart would not even talk to Africa. In Asia, when the Asians were, were beginning to enter global trade, they organized uh, huge trading companies like Marubeni in uh, Japan and in South Korea, they are similar equivalents. The Chabols in South Korea uh, uh, were able to therefore pool production and be able to engage at the appropriate scale in world trade. But the way colonial intervention in Africa, fractured Africa, makes it difficult for Africa to be able to meaningfully engage in world trade. All right, Professor, Professor Otomi, we're really running uh, behind time. And I wanted to ask you, you know, just these, these words from Okonjo Iwela. She says, one of the priorities now is to reform and rejuvenate the World Trade Organization to be what the 21st century needs it to be, especially in Africa. And how would you suggest they go about this to the benefit of, you know, the African continent? Well, that's part of uh, what uh, I was uh, leading up in, in the point I was making. Uh, the uh, African continental free trade area is a major move forward. We've got to then, within the context of AXTA, improve aggregation across borders. We need technical assistance to facilitate that. We need investments from elsewhere into the continent 
to facilitate that. And this is what has been there and coming with fairness into the rule-based system. Because what a Trump administration, for example, was moving through was to get away from multilateralism and do essentially uh, bilateral trade, which can have the consequence of leaving out those who can actually be more efficient producers, but that are disadvantaged within the current uh, arrangements. So WTO will be a house of settlement for those kinds of trade deals to ensure fairness, improved access for all, and ultimately benefit for everybody. All right. Um, let's also quickly talk about COVID-19. Um, she has taken over DG as a, of WTO in a, a year of a pandemic once again. Um, I'm sure that, of course, it, it makes it you know, a harder um, um, task for her. Um, so what do you think, you know, or how do you think she would be able to somehow um, still be successful regardless? Well, one, one of the major consequences of COVID-19 is that global supply chains were significantly fractured yes. because of lockdowns in different places and the like. Uh, it will take creative intervention to ensure that the costs to the weaker members is not permanent damage. I'll give you a simple example. Nigerian ports are currently a complete mess. Uh, this is partly because manufacturers were, have been shut out from getting raw materials for some time because of the fractured supply chains. As trade begins to resume, a system to process has not adapted. Shipping companies have raised prices of shipping things to a country like Nigeria very significantly as a result of it. Now, these can be dealt with by the rules in this kind of multilateral arrangement so that a country like Nigeria, because of its inefficiencies, is not locked out of global trade by the kind of costs that it can attract as a result of this shifting order. All right, sir, All Professor right. Otomi, really, everyone, you know, has been congratulating Okonjoewela for her success, you know, her emergence, you know, to this top position, you know, as DG of the WTO. So briefly, in just about 30 seconds, we'd like you to touch on how, you know, this big news, you know, inspires girls and women everywhere. And like you said, encourages parents and the government as well to push for education. You know, that will give us more opportunities for women everywhere. Yes, it's so important because any group of people that lock out half of their population cannot compete as well with people who utilize 100% of their population. Role models are important for how people aspire. And her success will lead to a lot of younger women recognizing that there's much more to being a woman than wearing fancy clothes. And so they will try to get into the kinds of schools she got into, to go to the Harvards of this world, to go to the MITs of this world, and to prepare themselves well for the kinds of roles they could play in the world. All right. Um, also, um, Professor Otomi, final uh, question. And this one is going to be on a you know, personal level now. Um, if you remember, not long ago, there were petitions you know, being sent to Yale to withdraw an honorary degree that was uh, given to Okonje Wella. Um, uh, it was mostly, you know, between 2015 and, you know, 2017, I believe. I'm not sure exactly what year that was. Um, but there were people who felt like she was a part of your government that they weren't really happy about. And so they had um, started to sign petitions asking that Yale uh, withdraws her honorary degree. Um, what would your reaction be to that, um, be the chain between that era and where we are today? No, I, don't, I don't think there has, there's really ever been 
a good reason uh, for her not to be considered worthy of being honored. I think politics brings a number of things. And part of the challenge was that she served in an administration that, you know, in spite of her effort, acted not too well. And, and this uh, led to certain feelings. But there was also another thing. The, the Americans were pushing an agenda that many Africans frowned very much at. And they tried to typecast all those who didn't go along with that agenda. And that was one of the ways, too, that people tried to rub that in. But these are matters of transient politics and do not take away from the solid base from which he comes to All this right. assignment. Absolutely. Professor Patsutomi, thank you so much um, for speaking with us. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. And uh, we all wish uh, Dr. Ngozi Okonje Wela the very best as the DGWTO. Pleasure. All, All right. right, our guest is standing by. She's the Director General of NAVDAC, Dr. Uh, Professor Mujisola Ade Yeye. So we'll be talking about COVID-19 vaccines and NAVDAC right after this break. To stay with us.